<laughs> Welcome back to another story time with Miss Ashley and Adam. and Adam. Today we're reading our favorite bedtime book. It is Midnight Farm by Carly Simon, illustrated by David Delamere. There's a farm that I know, unlike any other farm. As the sun goes down, the air gets warm, and the birds wake up, and the wildflowers bloom, and the sheep jitterbug under a round rolling moon. And that's just the beginning, not the rest. Now the rest will unfold. It was the summer Noah and I turned five years old. One night in July, we woke to hoots and howls. It sounded nothing like a nightingale, nothing like an owl. We looked out the window and the sea was very calm, but the joint was jumping on our Martha's Vineyard farm. Just when you'd expect every living thing to doze, vegetables and flowers were putting on their clothes. In our pajamas, we left the house and we were led to the yard by a little field mouse. In a squeaky clear voice, she said, kids are allowed. You'll be rather amused. You'll be part of the crowd. As we walked through the garden, the onions and the peas did a jig just to welcome my twin brother and me. And while nothing can sleep, like a cantaloupe can. Nocturnal snoozing was not part of the plan. A flock of flamingos woke the deer melon with their chattering, bickering, howling and yelling. They were arguing over whose beak was longer, whose pink was pinker and whose legs were stronger. The cantaloupe split open from laughing so hard and animals joined in all over the yard. They came from the barn and from the neat flower beds and from those winding little furrows where melons poke their heads. Raccoons checked their hairdos, mosquitoes rubbed their wings, while weeds, usually messy, formed tidy straight lines. Sorry, mosquitoes rubbed their wines. <laughs> Look, looks like the songs are about to begin the field mouse informed us as she raised her mandolin. Come meet the tulip who conducts the midnight choir. He's an old fuddy-duddy, but he's about to retire. A colt and a kitten and a new baby lamb wobbled into the yard just in time for the jam and an old apple tree who had to bend pretty far, strummed a little strum on a driftwood guitar. A cabbage whose feet looked a lot like his face played the coolest of notes on a beetle bug bass, while a moth from Mamisha and a gull from West Chop beat time with their wings on a scrub oak tree top. As if by magic, a goat with a goatee gave a flute and an oboe to Noah and me. There was nothing to do but pucker and blow. It knocked the socks off a cricket and the pants off a crow. All eyes were upon us as the tulip turned round. He struck his baton quite hard on the ground. If you're going to play, please play the same song. I cannot hear the hymn when your notes are all wrong. He is a cranky tulip. Then he handed us music on sycamore leaves. A great, and suddenly in buzzed a great swarm of bees. They surrounded us filling in oohs and then ahs. And the audience and an audience of cows went wild with applause. This woke up the pond, first the fish, then the frogs, who splashed sparkling water on a few of the hogs, or pigs as we call them. 
And they ran just like elves, stealing a piece of the night for themselves. Joining in on the fun, a fox on a tractor wore a hat with a brim like a Hollywood actor. He tried to round up the pigs like some rough cowboy dude, but it frightened the roses and the bees thought it was rude. Noah feared we'd get stung. The queen bee looked so mean. When we ran, we got tangled in her wide crinoline. Look at those pigs getting chased by the fox on the tractor. So the tulip conductor became very cross. He shouted, boys will be boys, but I am the boss. Go back to the house, get back into bed. His face, once just rosy, turned fire engine red. Poor tulip conductor, he was trying so hard. Be professionals, he shouted. And that cracked up the yard. The queen laughed so much that her crown Elaine ripped. And Noah and I took a fall and then flipped. We rolled over and over and down a great hill and bumped into a turtle heating pearls on a grill. What are you doing? I couldn't help but ask. The turtle looked giddy as he explained his strange task. You see, when they're warm, they float towards the moon then rain down on the farm, making everything swoon. And sleep shortly follows, the magic will be over, and I'll crawl very slowly back under my cover. <laughs> Just then a dolphin with silver green eyes jumped out of the ocean and continued to rise. As we gazed at the sky, the wind caught the pearls, and I knew that that signaled a change in the world. Noah started to cry. He didn't want it to end. He said that the turtle was going to be his best friend. As the pearls turned to mist, it all seemed so weird. We looked back at the turtle, but he just disappeared. We walked back up the hill and the bees were all gone. The tulip conductor had dropped his baton. The pigs were a cluster of pink in their box, and no tracks from the tractor, no trace of the fox. The cantaloupe slept like the inventor of sleep, and the cows and the kittens snored alongside the sheep. The moth and the gull snuggled close to a wren, and the old apple tree stood straight up again. The moon sat right down like a schooner at sea. The morning wouldn't wait for Noah and me. Just the mouse was still waiting, as mice often wait, to show us to the door saying, gee, it got late. But really it's early. I guess they're one and the same. Good night, little boys. I'm glad that you came. All we could hear was the nightingale's song our island farm was wrapped in a mist a mile long. I love you. I love you. As we drifted to sleep, we knew there'd be more. We never know when or how or what for. But we knew something would wake us again one late night. And I'm happy to tell you, yes, we were right. Friends, wasn't that an amazing story? Could you imagine looking out your window and seeing flowers dressed up and animals and having a party and playing music? Wouldn't that be so cool? That would be so cool. I hope you like my story. United We Read for Kids, Head Start Sticks Together. I love you guys. Bye. I have a neighbor.